Hey, it's Jordan with Status Quo. Breaking news, Dr. Cornell West is now running for president as an independent candidate, choosing to forego his pursuit of the Green Party presidential nomination. Uh, he originally announced he was running as a People's Party candidate. Uh, that did not last long. Uh, then he announced that he would be pursuing the Green Party nomination, uh, but now he is choosing uh, to run as an independent, uh, which basically is going straight to the voters uh, rather than, you know, pursuing a nomination through a party. Let me read for you the statement from his campaign. Uh, recently, Peter Dow, a former Democratic Party uh, supporter, but has evolved now into a third party uh, proponent. Peter Dow recently took over as his campaign manager. And this is the statement from Cornell West campaign. Cornell West is in this race to challenge, challenge the hegemony of the two ruling parties, the corporate duopoly, which oppresses the poor and working class. It is long past time to stop ping-ponging between Republicans and Democrats while millions of our friends and neighbors lack housing, health care, decent jobs, clean air, clean water, nutritious food, and a healthy environment. Democracy means more choices, not backroom deals. It means freedom to vote your conscience without being shamed or bullied. As Dr. West's campaign for president grows, he believes the best way to challenge the entrenched system is by focusing 100% on the people, not on the intricacies of internal party dynamics. Our constitution provides for independent candidates to gain ba ballot access in all states, and Dr. West has begun seeking ballot access as an independent, unaffiliated with any political party. At this, as this movement gains momentum, Dr. West acknowledges and nods in solidarity with the Green Party for their shared values and commitment to justice. So that is a statement from Cornell West's campaign. Uh, I've been on the road on and off for the last 20 days uh, covering the UAW strikes. We are still going to be covering the UAW strikes. Uh, Ron Pacone is going to be on the ground starting tomorrow for us, uh, continuing to cover the UAW strikes. So do not go anywhere. Uh, we will continue to cover the UAW strikes on the ground. And thank you to everybody who has supported that coverage. Uh, if you want to continue to support us, because it's very expensive to be on the ground for over three weeks, sign up as a status coup member status coup.com slash join so i don't have any deep intel in, into this decision uh obviously running for the green party nomination you're running through a party uh, and a political process and he would not have been the official nominee um till the convention which i believe is next spring or summer uh so really running as a green party candidate for cornell west running as an independent uh there is no major difference other than ballot access. Uh, would the Green Party running as a Green Party uh, nominee, would that help him get ballot access in more states uh, versus running as an independent? That I, I really don't know. I believe he could get uh, as much ballot access running as an independent. Uh, Ross Perot uh, ran back in 92 as an independent and had strong ballot access. Uh, so we will have to see. And obviously, uh, Cornell West is welcome on status quo. And we could ask him about that. Uh, I pretty sure that if Peter Dow would have been his campaign manager from the beginning, he probably would have ran as an independent rather than pursuing the Green Party nomination. So I don't think it's a massive difference in terms of the type of voters Cornell West would get, uh, how much he would get in terms of the percentage of the vote. I just think this is going straight to the voters, like his campaign said, rather than trying to win a nomination through a party. Uh, in the broader landscape, I do find it interesting considering Obviously, RFK Jr. Uh, is going to be announcing, we believe, an independent run uh, next week. Uh, we'll get into that uh, in a minute. But I first want to show you, uh, this is a recent Guardian article uh, with quotes from Cornell West. Um, At a fundraising event in Bus Boys and Poets, a left-wing bookshop and restaurant in D.C., uh, West, a veteran activist of myriad causes, insistent insisted he seeks the sympathies of neither cohort, but is instead trying to woo alienated, hardened non-voters. Quote, I think that we are not clear if either Biden or Trump will be in the actual election uh, because things are so flexible and fluid right now. He said on being asked by The Guardian to respond to warnings that his candidacy was a boon to Trump. Quote, but I happen to be focusing on the 40% that don't vote at all. And I happen to be pulling from the 62% of folks who do who do vote but who would never vote for the two parties. So if there's some taking from both parties, it's going to be very, very small. 
quote, I've got to be able to speak the truth no matter what. I'm planning to do what do that until the very end. So in that sense, who knows who's stealing from who? Uh, I think there's quite a few important points here. First of all, uh, this might be not popular among some. Uh, I think West is right. I, I do not think it's clear at this point if Biden will stay in the race uh, for a lot of reasons. I mean, it's not breaking news. If you watch President Biden, uh, he is not in his prime. Uh, that would be a bit of an understatement. Um, he has been struggling in, in many ways, uh, regardless of the polling, which is at a really, really dangerous place for an incoming president. His approval rating is low. Uh, his support for his performance on the economy is very, very low, uh, very low for an incumbent. Um, and obviously he, you know, has the DNC has chosen not to hold a primary because I think they know he would not be able to compete, particularly in debates. Uh, and they would be it would be exposed uh, that he is not really up to the job physically or mentally. Um, and then you have Trump. Listen, uh, you know, I can't cover the chaos of Trump every day. I know there was recently a gag order against him. There's civil cases, criminal cases. However, uh, as I've said for months, I think in terms of all his legal liability, the one case that has serious uh, legal liability with not a lot of gray area, I, I, I think he is in deep jeopardy of being tried and convicted is the classified documents case, which right now is scheduled to start before the election. Um, I mean, whether you're a Trump supporter or not, it's pretty cut and dry. If you take off your partisan goggles, uh, he withheld you know, classified documents. He obstructed uh, the effort to get them back uh, by all reports. He instructed his staff to move them uh, and hide them against a subpoena. I think uh, even his lawyers at a certain point, they, they don't seem to have a defense. Uh, the Presidential Records Act is not a defense. Uh, so if you study Donald Trump over the last 40 years, I think it's very doubtful once his lawyers tell him it's we're going to lose here. Um, I think it's doubtful that Donald Trump would risk going to prison. I think it's much more likely Donald Trump would drop out of the race and make some kind of deal, you know, maybe a glorified house arrest for a year or two. Uh, record fine. Uh, that's just my opinion. I, I don't think Donald Trump would jeopardize uh, or risk going to prison. Uh, devil's advocate, you could say, well, Jordan, you know, uh, even if he loses, he could then appeal so he wouldn't go to prison right away. Yeah, sure. Uh, but you think Donald Trump's going to roll the dice to, you know, I'm just going to take my chances and try to win the presidency and then pardon myself? Uh, I don't know about that. I, I do not know about that. So right now, I think it's very fluid. Uh, there, there is precedent for an incumbent president dropping out. Lyndon B. Johnson dropped out uh, to everybody's surprise back in the late 60s. Uh, so it is not definite that it will be Biden first Trump at this point. Uh, it also, uh, you have the added monkey wrench now of RFK Jr. Run, running as an independent, which polls are indicating uh, RFK as an independent would actually pull more votes away from Trump. Uh, this whole time, I've been saying there's no data that actually supports Cornell West pulling significant votes against uh, from President Biden because the polls indicate that uh, Biden, uh, Cornell West voters that would vote for him would just not vote if the choice were Biden and Trump. But uh, according to this poll, uh, RFK would pull votes away from Trump. Uh, let's read this. This is from. Uh, News Nation, uh, referring to a poll that was commissioned by RFK Super PAC. Um, a poll conducted by a Super PAC supporting RFK reports a third party bid would pull more support from former President Donald Trump than Joe Biden. Um, in the poll, Trump garnered 40 percent support. Biden secured 38 percent support. The generic independent candidate obtained 17 support. However, when Kennedy was introduced as the independent candidate, the numbers shifted. Trump and Biden were tied at 38 percent each, while Kennedy garnered 19 support, indicating a decline in Trump's backing. Uh, despite the speculation surrounding his potential party switch, Kennedy has not officially confirmed any plans. Uh, according to reporting by Mediaite, uh, he is going to announce October 9th that he is running as an independent. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of elements here. The bottom line, I mean, I haven't really made my thoughts on RFK Jr. secret. I, not a fan. Uh, I do think he should have had a chance to compete in the Democratic Party uh, primary. Uh, so should Marianne Williamson. There should have been debates. Uh, it is not Democratic, uh, regardless of what I think of uh, RFK. 
uh, at some point. At one point, I think he was polling close to 20 percent. Uh, so obviously he should have got a chance to make his case. So should Marianne Williamson, uh, who I think, you know, is, is more aligned with my policies and has run the vigorous campaign and was polling in some cases uh, between 12 and 15 percent. Um, but at the end of the day, if you read inside the polls, most of RFK support was coming from independents and Republicans, uh, not Democrats. Uh, RFK's message aligns more with moderates and conservatives. Um, you know, his resistance to the Ukraine war, which is more popular on the Republican side than the Democratic side, his anti-vax or vaccine skepticism is more in line with Republicans. Um, there's really nothing he's pushing that is in line with, you know, capital D, MSNBC watching, Rachel Maddow loving Democrats. Uh, and I think, you know, there are a, a good percentage of the Republican base that were those kind of Reagan Democrats. They long ago were like JFK Democrats who then shifted to Reagan. So they have some history of voting for Democrats and might like RFK because the, of the connection they have with JFK and the Kennedys while he is pushing things that are more aligned with Republicans. So I think RFK as an independent uh, could definitely pull more votes from Trump. Uh, I'm still not convinced that Cornell West is going to pull more votes from Biden because Cornell West is targeting non-voters. Uh, I do think he's targeting uh, Democratic Party and Republican voters, but I think his core message is going to be to the non-voters because he's the only one I see actually talking about poverty and actually talking about doing something about poverty. Uh, it's, it's one thing to talk about it. It's another thing to actually propose policies to address it. Uh, so I think Cornell West, um, if anyone's going to be pulling votes away from anybody, I think RFK is going to be the one pulling votes away from Trump, which, of course, he'll now be loved by the Democratic Party. Uh, Cornell West, I don't see any evidence or polls that show he pulls a lot of voters away from Biden. Uh, devil's advocate, you could say, well, Cornell West will be popular among younger voters, kind of that Bernie base who voted for Bernie. Uh, and if he wasn't running, those younger voters would vote for Biden. Not necessarily. I mean, even before Cornell West announced he was running, uh, those younger voters have been fleeing in the polls from Biden. So based on Biden's uh, total ina inadequate uh, policies on climate, uh, on student loans, which he could have canceled it all and used the Health Act to do it and go around the Supreme Court, uh, you know, abandoning a $15 minimum wage, abandoning a public option. I think a lot of young people that might have held their nose and voted for Biden in 2020 are not going to vote for him, whether whether West was running or not. Uh, it's not necessarily the media likes to think that, oh, West is pulling them from Biden. Well, the polls show right now that a very significant chunk of those younger voters would not vote for Biden, even if West wasn't running. Also, uh, Biden has been losing support among black voters. Same thing. I don't think there's a strong case that if West was not running, Biden wouldn't lose support among black voters. So it's not necessarily West pulling voters from Biden. Those voters are already pulled away. They, they don't seem to want to vote for Biden, which we saw in 2016, where Hillary Clinton underperformed among black voters, younger voters, Latino voters, compared to Obama four years earlier. I just want to play this clip. This was my colleague, Tina Desiree Berg, interviewing Cornell West uh, on the picket line. Cornell West was out there at the Ford strike in Wayne, Michigan. Of course, we were there as well because we've been on the ground this entire time. Uh, let's take a look at what Cornell West had to say. Oh, because I can't stand greedy bosses. I can't stand profit obsessed owners that act, treat workers as if they're less than human. I come from a rich tradition that's connected to this brother right here, Horace Sheffield the third, whose grandfather was the first black foreman, whose father was a towering figure who worked with, with Martin Luther King Jr. and others than my dear sister. It's Tanya Taylor. Tanya Taylor and my dear Aaron brother. Aaron Truitt is it? Aaron Truitt. Absolutely. So to know, I, I, I salute Brother Sean, his leadership, and uh, I'm just hoping that we can follow through. We need solidarity, solidarity, solidarity. Yes. I know the president was here yesterday and the symbolic gestures, you know, they're empty. If you don't follow through, he broke the back of railway worker strikes already. He's been rationalizing corporate greed for the last 35 years. So it's nice for him to come and to say some words and things, but we need more than pretty words. That 
is why I think Cornell West is going to get significant chunks of non-voters as well as young voters and black voters. And again, I don't think he's going to be pulling them from Biden. I don't think those people are voting for Biden, even if Cornell West dropped out today. Uh, I think they're going to just vote for Cornell West or not vote. Uh, so it remains fluid. Obviously, we'll cover it. Uh, Cornell West is welcome on the show to uh, discuss his uh, choice to now run as an independent. But the plot thickens. 